All right, Rick, this is the Seaborn SX239. She's 23 feet, 9 inches long, the largest boat of the three that we brought. Dave, and it is, and it's got a big boat feel to it and big boat features. I mean, you don't often see seating up in the bow like this on a 23 center console. You don't often see a, a windlass to pull your anchor with. There's just a lot of, uh, it's in the same class, the 21 to 23s, but this boat actually has more of a big boat offshore feel, partly because she's got so much more freeboard. Her sides are real high. All right, this bow seating package, it's an optional thing that you can add to the boat because it is put in after the boat is built. The backrest are removable, so are the cushions. So if you want to use it as a casting deck or to get on and off the boat a lot easier, it's a good feature to have because if you go to crawl up on that bow as high as it is without this, that's a large, large step. You're a long ways up there. It really is. Other features I like, this built-in handrail, it's, a, it's not only there for safety, but it's just the, the security of going up to either mess with the anchor or go forward. Let's say you're going to tie off to a dock. Having something to hang on to without that great King big body bow or, or a wahoo really or something nice. like that. Dave, that you, you know, this really... seating up here is nice, but you and I both know that if you're running, this is the least comfortable place to sit. Do they make a version without the seating up here? Well, they do. This is the classic that we're in now. They also make the open. And with the open, the seating is removed, and they replace it with a coffin box. So if you want to take this boat tournament fishing, and you catch a nice big kingfish or cobia or a wahoo or something like that, now you have a really big fish box up here in which to put it now, in. Now, that's a perfect scenario for this boat for me. Well, we do have two fish boxes built in the floor on either side and the back. So let's say you wanted a boat that did a little bit of both. You wanted to party a little bit. You wanted to fish a little bit, go to the sandbar. You wanted some versatility. You still could keep your bow seating and have fish boxes in the stern. You come back here to the console, you can easily put a head in here and mount any kind of electronics you want on here with easy access. You know, and sometimes it's the little things I look at when I look at different boats to see if the manufacturer did. If you look at this, it's a little fiddle or tray or whatever you want to call it. It's something really insignificant, but it's really a nice option to have. No, it's not insignificant. A cell phone stays in there. Exactly. Okay? I'm notorious talking on the phone, setting my phone up on the console, going to fight a fish or something. Next thing I hear is flat when it hits the deck. The seat, very similar to the other boats that we've seen already so far. Something I love on this boat because I dive almost as much as I fish is the fact that I've got a transom door so I can easily get in and out of the water. See, Mr. Boat Builder, you walk right past this. This is ground zero for a fisherman. You're going to rig your baits, you're going to get ready to fish, cut them up if you're bottom fishing, sew them if you're trolling. You can do it right here on this starboard cutting board. See, now when I take a boat out, a lot of times we'll be with the wife and kids, they're going to notice cup holders, something that you missed. Another thing that they're going to like is the fact that I've got a built-in freshwater shower right here at the transom. So you come in, you got salt water on you, you spray off. So here again, it's one boat that can do both things. All right, Rick, you know, we've seen a lot of flip-up stern seating on the boats that we've tested so far in the series. The one thing that Seaborn did that I absolutely love, it gave you easy access to all your rigging. And let me tell you how important that is, okay? If you can't get back there, you don't lift that hatch. You don't check. In fact, I'm such a nut about it. I check as soon as I leave the dock every morning because we're also dependent on our electric bilge pumps. We don't know if they malfunction. I know because I can check down in the bilge every morning to make sure there's no water there. Now, over in this corner, you got a live well. May not be the size live well that you crazy fishermen go after, but you know what? It's plenty big and it's round. And you hit on it right there, it's round. Any corner in a live well is trouble, Dave. A fish has to keep swimming to get oxygen through his gills. He can do it in here because it's perfectly round and it doesn't put him in a corner and let him run out of air. Well, you know what, let's recap this boat because, I mean, we could spend an entire show just on this boat. There are a lot of really, really nice features. You got hoss pipes built in. You have this console that's got a step down where it's got a hit. There's enough room in there, even for somebody much taller than you, <laughs> to stand up inside the console. All right, it's the larger boat of the three that we brought, but the features that we've seen on this boat, you normally don't see until you get into a 28 or 32 foot center console. You're right, Dave. How, how about the windlass? Man, do I hate pulling anchors push a button that comes up. You don't see that on a lot of 23 center consoles. So if you want to fish just you and your buddy or you and your wife, you're going to spend your time offshore. You got a serious case of blue water fever. This is an excellent representative of a 23 foot offshore boat.